Howdy folks, Nathan here, and this is the 2025 Chevrolet Equinox. This is their all new active package. It is top of the line, and it looks almost like it can go off road. Now, let me ask you a question, so bear with me for just a minute. Imagine if you're an automaker and you have to follow the likes of Honda and Toyota and even Nissan when it comes to auto sales of your most popular vehicle because for Chevrolet, this is one of their most popular. The Equinox is a huge seller for them. In 2023, they sold like over 214,000 of these things. So they're popular. Granted, that is less than half of what Toyota sold with the RAV4. However, Toyota has more configurations with their vehicle. So does Honda. They have a hybrid. They have a frankly beefier turbo. And in Toyota's case, they even have a plug-in hybrid. All of these options are available. Plus, for Toyota, they kind of have a few off-roady versions of it. But then you have Nissan as well. And there are a lot of other players in this segment, including Ford and Hyundai. So they're all stacked in there. But General Motors is a competitor in this segment. And then they decided to go and they brought out the electric, the EV Equinox. Confusing everybody because they like to reuse names. I don't get it. So the identity of one of their best-selling vehicles was kind of pushed off to the side a little bit. At least that's what I thought. So what do you do to change the identity of a vehicle that is a good seller for you, make it a little bit more competitive, even though you don't have too many options when it comes to powertrain or frankly, to the platform? Well, this is it. Okay, folks, on all three trims, you still get the same engine, which is a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. It is all aluminum and it's either hooked up to a continuously variable transmission, a CVT if you get front wheel drive, or an eight-speed automatic transmission if you get the all-wheel drive. That's the only way they come. There's no option for hybrid systems or electrification unless you go to the full electric Equinox, which shares no parts with this one. Now, if you do get this one, which is the all-wheel drive, you'll be able to achieve, according to EPA estimates, 24 MPG city, 29 MPG highway and 26 combined. If you get the front wheel drive CBT, you're able to get 26 city, 28 highway and 27 combined. Once again, that is an EPA estimated number. Official numbers are not available yet. The horsepower, it's not great. Uh, 175 horsepower. This is actually not even official. This is called a GM estimate, but I'm pretty sure it'll be close to that. It certainly feels like that. And if you get the eight speed, you get 203 pound feet of torque, which is actually decent in the class. However, if you get the CVT, that drops down to 184 pound feet of torque. I suppose that would have something to do with the actual CVT itself and the fact that it's just, geared, it's just very different in terms of the way it works. But the bottom line is that uh, if you compare this vehicle to the competition in terms of feel and in terms of actual numbers, it's definitely not best in class for either. Fortunately, pricing is what really makes this thing stand out. And the interior, I think, is a huge leap forward. Okay, so this is a major highway right here. And we're just gonna see how this thing does from a stop. Foot's all the way down. Burned a little tiny bit of rubber there. And we're still going, we're still, we're, it's only, it, and there's 60, okay. Now granted, this wasn't a perfectly flat surface and it wasn't, you know, primed or anything else, but we're pretty close to sea level here. And yeah, you can feel the torque, right? Because it the tires broke loose and it was definitely trying to kick up something. I'm guessing that if I was an all wheel drive, it'd probably be a little bit quicker in terms of launch, but you're not going very fast. And passing power in this, it has to spool up a little bit before it goes. I'll give you an example. So there's some guys way ahead of me. I'm gonna back off a little bit and let them pull a little bit further away. Okay, now I'm gonna put my foot down right now. See, wait, there's the power. Around 3000 RPM is when you really start feeling that thing spool up and kick in. And this turbo, it's not like a really high revving one. I think it enjoys being at the lower rev range just to kind of get its economy and everything else out there. So it's not that happy being punished. I've driven one of these yesterday, I drove one today, on the highway and on the roads, doesn't want to be hurried. 
But there's good news. They've managed to make the interior even quieter, and because of that, it's a little bit more of a relaxed feel. Now, granted, this is a little bit wider, and it feels like it's got a little bit more interior room, but I think some of that's just done with some clever packaging. The big news for the new Active package really starts here, and that's because they've got some actual off-road tires. These are General Grabber ATs. These are 235, 65 R17s. And yeah, there's real sidewall here. There's real beef here in the tire. I've actually driven these off-road before in other vehicles. And they're decent on the street and they're pretty good in snow. Um, altogether, decent tire and usable off-road. So does that mean that this thing has a locker? It sure doesn't, but we will talk about what it does have in a moment. Let's go on to styling because that's the whole point of these tires, honestly is to make this look more off-road capable. There's nothing about this vehicle that is any different in terms of its off-road capability than say the LT, save one thing. There is an off-road mode in there and they did revise the suspension a little bit. But in terms of overall drivetrain and everything else, pretty much all the same stuff. Now, let's have a look right here because the three different trims that are available for the Equinox have three different faces. So the LT's face, and that is essentially your base model, it doesn't look like this. The RS, well, it's all blackened and everything else. It doesn't look like this. This has this, the active, has this blacked out chrome strip running through the front of it. And then this front end here looks a little bit more truck-like, and that was done on purpose. They want this whole vehicle to look like it's a little bit more macho, right? And by the way, you guys might be thinking, okay, so it does. I mean, check out these pillars and caps here. The white, um, that is an option. You can either get a body color or white. You cannot get the black roof on the active though. You can only do that on the RS. And yeah, it kind of looks cool, I think actually. Uh, this cactus color, another thing available right here just for this. Over there, see this little nubby right here? Well, you can get a tow package. If you get the all-wheel drive, like this one, you can tow up to 1,500 pounds. If you get the front-wheel drive CVT, you could tow up to 800 pounds. One final note is that, despite the fact that there are some different graphics on here and slightly different shapes and whatnot, overall, the same silhouette between all three models, the LT, the Active, and the RS. The ride quality, despite having fairly clunky tires, is pretty good. I think that it rides a little bit better than the RS. Now, mind you, the only RS we drove had the optional 20-inch tire and wheel package, which is not even available until November. Otherwise, you get the 19s. However, these with the 17-inch wheels, and which means more rubber, squishy rubber, seems to allow for a better ride. And the handling, it doesn't feel any heavier around corners than the RS. Maybe the RS corners a hair bit better, but honestly, you're not buying these things for high performance, man. You're buying them because you want a commuter, and then this particular case, you want a commuter that looks like it's a little bit rough and capable. Um, we're gonna do one more acceleration run on this highway here. Ready? And here we go. Once again, breaking loose a little bit with the rubber. And wait for it. There it is. And that was going downhill. So it ain't fast. But it's not slow. It's, it's kind of like in the middle. Um, for those of you who have driven the Honda CRV with its turbocharged engine, it's definitely got a little bit more kick. And I think passing power is a little bit better. Um, this one, actually, you know what? Let's go into all wheel drive while we're here. Okay. Wait. Oh shoot, okay. Come on, baby, all-wheel drive. It takes a second. Okay, I'm in all-wheel drive. All right, not revving it. You didn't hear any squeal or anything else. Hmm, interesting. So you know what's happening right now? Probably not that much faster if it is at all. What happened was, it feels like the acceleration was slightly dropped, detuned a little bit. 
so it was less peaky. I wasn't going to as high of an RPM level as I was with two-wheel drive. I think that's done on purpose to preserve the all-wheel drive system. That's just a guess, but it makes sense, and the other vehicles have done stuff like that before. So, yes, off the line, the all-wheel drive definitely kicks in a little bit quicker. Uh, you don't lose any traction, right? But then on the other end, it doesn't rev as high. So I think there's a bit of a mix between the two of them and what you're actually able to do off the line. It's an interesting mix. It's not something that I was expecting out of this vehicle. Not that I'm expecting high performance at all. This is not that type of car. <laughs> I mean, not even close. All right, shall we enter the vehicle? They changed a lot with the interior design, which I'm actually very happy about. The previous Equinox, I was pretty rude about it. I would, when people would ask me, I'd say, yeah, it's a nice rental. This is something else. And that's because they went to the GM setup, these two screens. This pod here is very similar to what they have going on in other GM vehicles. However, let me start the engine. This one actually is a little different in terms of overall size. So, what am I talking about? Yes, yes, we know the engine started. Wow. This is an 11 inch screen, and this is an 11.3 inch screen. Infotainment, and this is all of your information, which by the way is configurable. Very simple with the push of a button. There's our maps to show you uh, that we are in Minnesota. Uh, another one, another one. Yeah, I really like the fact that this is configurable, but more importantly, guys, this setup with these two screens is standard across the board from the entry level model all the way up to the active and the RS. This is bespoke to the active, this interior. This is a soft material. I think they call it soft tex or fake X or something X. So it's not real leather. I like the feel of it actually better. It has a nice little spongy feel to it. Get that up here as well. And then you have this highlighted stitching here. And I'll show you the seats in a minute. And they're actually pretty comfortable. Panoramic sunroof. Let me go all the way back there. I love having this as an option. This is something that makes the interior completely pop, right? And it doesn't really encumber head space. I mean, I've got a pretty tall torso and I'm not bumping against the top. Okay, a couple other things. The way they designed the steering wheel, by the way, very spongy, good feeling materials here. I actually like the fact that General Motors went from having a really hard piece of plastic to a soft piece of plastic at the horn button, well, softer. Um, this design is great. <laughs> I really like the way they designed their steering wheel and the button layout. And yes, paddle shifters. This follows some of the other vehicles that General Motors is putting out and they're going back to the stock. And their reasoning is, they say, uh, to free up more space here. Uh, the real reason is part spin, I think, because other vehicles have this as such as modular and you're able to put it in there and you're able to save some money. And that's kind of the whole thing about this vehicle is that they built it on a pretty tight budget, I bet, and yet they were able to really make it different. And I'm very proud of General Motors for figuring out a way to do that, especially on the active model, because I think it looks good. All right, a couple more things about the interior. Yes, this is a wireless charging thing. No, it's not working great. Um, maybe it's because of my phone case, but a lot of you guys have phone cases, right? Over here, you have USB and USB-C. I'm very happy about that. I think that all cars should have that option because there's a million... Well, millions, actually, I should say, USB-Cs that are still out there. Sorry, USBs that are out there and USB-Cs that will be out there. Point is that having that choice is nice. A little place to put your stuff here. And then underneath here, there is more storage, um, which is great for bottles, purses, or manly handbag. Um, and then, of course, here, more storage. And I think, yep, that comes out. So... Decent storage in here. Uh, yeah, not the biggest glove compartment on the planet. It's okay. Um, I find that the interior layout is actually really comfortable. I have decent sight lines. But here's my favorite part. Right there. Guys, I love having this. I love... This is an LCD 
rear view mirror. Now I could flip it and make it a normal mirror, but that is LCD, my friends. Meaning that if you have people behind you, they're not encumbering your outward view. It works well at night. The image is crystal clear. And for the vehicles that I've driven over the past, I'd say almost 10 years, this has been, I think, a godsend. Other manufacturers are starting to use this too, by the way. I think it's a fantastic thing to have. So LCD rear view camera standard. Love it. Can we stuff this big sausage into this vehicle? The answer is yes. The big boy fits quite comfortably too, frankly. Now, a couple things you should know. Back seat comfort is quite good. And this material is kind of like a suede. It feels pretty good. And I actually like it better than some of the other materials that other people have been shoving into these vehicles that feels a little gritty to me. This actually is very smooth. I think it's smoother than it actually looks on camera. They want it to look like it's like a cloth or something like that, kind of rugged, right? No, nah, it's smooth as hell. It's nice. Okay, center armrest. Got the cup holders right here. Really good news. Heated seats, far out. This makes me very happy too. Rear vents. There are some vehicles out there that compete with this one that don't have these. And then down there, it's hard to see, but those are actual USB-C connections. Very cool. That makes me happy. The rest of the back seat is really simple. It's a basic layout, but you may notice something. I'm sitting behind myself from 6'1". I have a lot of leg room. Headroom is pretty good too. Comfort is decent. You could put three adults in here, just as long as they're not as chunky as I am. Uh, I'd say maybe three skinny adults wouldn't have too much of a problem. But these seats do not recline or slide or do anything like that, okay? Just so you know. All right, guys, this is really slow opening, but it gives me enough time to tell you that back there is a 29.8 cubic foot cargo area behind the second row. Now, if I put those seats down, it's a 63.5 cubic foot cargo area. That's actually pretty good. It is competitive, but there's more. You got cargo space down here, and this is huge for me. That's a donut, my friends. Not everybody does that. There are a lot of people who are getting away from using spare tires in their vehicles. It's usually to save weight and maybe even a little bit of money of like a spare little kit in there to pump up your tire and put goo in there. If you have a flat, this is better. Just, it just is. All right, uh, a couple things I wanted to point out, first of all, um, camera system. It's actually pretty cool in this because, well, there we go, cameras, there. So you're able to go to a couple different views. So check this out, you got that view. And then that view, so that's the front and rear. Then from here, the over the head view of the front end, I guess this helps with parking. And this could help you if you're lining up to get a trailer. Then of course over here, this is great. Those are the front wheels. Uh, once again, probably good for parking. <laughs> this thing's not an off-roader, so you're not gonna be using this to navigate boulders. Uh, and then of course this is the rear end here. Um, so this is great if you're trying to also look at people and when you're parked and they don't know that you're doing that, it's kind of interesting. And then of course, this view, this widens the view of what you're looking at here. So there you go, see what I mean? So it cuts out this little side thing here. I really do like uh, the camera setup in here. It's very simple to use. The rest of this is relatively easy. Final thing is down here, we didn't talk about this, but these are the heating and air conditioning controls. Thank you, General Motors. These are actual switches, yeah. Heated and cooled front seats it's, uh, on the active and the RS. I believe this is an option on the LT. And then you have the switch gear down here as well. And of course, being able to turn your temperature up and down with these dual mode climate control. Love it, love all of that. Very simple to use or easy to use, intuitive. Yes, it's out of the GM parts bin. Everything here is. So this is not a button, see, I'm pushing it, but it is a rotating knob. And when I do this, it goes to off-road. That's from the normal mode. By the way, there's a little bit of a delay. So when you turn it, there's like a half a second delay. So that's off-road mode and that's snow and ice. That's it. Now, 
if you get the continuous of the variable of transmission of this one, now CVT looks identical to this one from the outside. However, obviously no off-road setting because you don't have anything in the rear pushing you along. Um, there is an all-wheel drive button over here on the side, by the way, that can be disabled or hit anytime you want if you feel you need all-wheel drive. Obviously, that's not going to be on the CVT either. But this switch here, this rotating knob, allows you to select what you're doing. Now, if you're on normal and you're cruising along, you can turn on and off your all-wheel drive. I don't think you're going to really see much. Yeah, so right down here, this is where it'll tell you if you're in all-wheel drive, and then I'll hit it, and it's two-wheel drive. Once again, a little tiny bit of a delay. Also, your auto start-stop is over there on the left side as well. The biggest thing here is the front end and for some people, the booty, which is always important to me. Front end design, very, very different. This is what they managed to do, the whole chiseled look versus this, which is a softer, smoother, rounder look, kind of like my head if I'm not wearing a hat. So big differences with the front end design. And then if you follow me over here, you're gonna notice that they changed pretty much every body panel as well. You can clearly see it here. Look at this line, how it dips down. This line is direct. They changed all of it. Coming on to the back now. The wheelbase is slightly longer on the new vehicle, but that essentially is suspension. This is essentially the same platform between the two vehicles, 2.5 inches wider. But coming on back to the Buddha, you can see here, this is it's kind of normal, normal, normal. Not a whole lot going on. Very soft lines over here crisp lines, much more of a family resemblance. You can see this design on the terrain. You can see it on the tracks. You can see it on other vehicles that Chevrolet builds. It definitely is a family similarity to it. But at the same time, they also straightened out the lines down here. Altogether, this vehicle is far more angular and a little bit more in your face. But more importantly, it's a little bit more distinctive. Okay, now we have them, the two top of the line vehicles. This here is the Active and this is the RS. And you can clearly see they physically look a little bit different. There are some different trim pieces in the front, especially when you look at the front end with the black components here versus the chrome and kind of beefier components here. There's definitely a little bit of a difference in terms of presence. And of course, the wheel and tire packages are different as well. And that's because you get either 19s or 20s on this one, the RS and the 17s with the big beefy off-road tires here on the Active. Now this is the LT, and like the other ones, it has 7.2 inches of ground clearance. That is less than the Toyota RAV4, it's less than a Honda CRV, less than what Subaru offers, but it's about equal to Nissan. Let's see what this thing does. Alrighty, so. Unlike a lot of events that we've gone to, they've actually given us access to their base model, and that would be the LT. And the reason why this is important is because this one is the front wheel drive LT, meaning that it has a continuously variable transmission, which we have not tested yet. And we're gonna do a brief drive testing. And now this is after two days of driving their eight speed automatic around. So this is something a little bit different. Now, one thing I can tell you right off the bat is that the seating position, the display, all of this stuff that's here is standard. So even for under 30 grand, you get the standard base model, you're still getting all of this stuff, that, um, and then you can add to it, like, well, this panoramic moonroof above me. But for the most part, other than that, I think this thing is pretty much basic, which is a good thing because they still manage to keep it quiet and we are on a really crappy road right now. Look at that. Yeah, that's uh, Minneapolis for you. Um, but more importantly, it's really composed. It's not rattling around or anything else. For early production, I think that's actually a positive thing. Um, but what about how the turbo reacts to having what is a band of metal going around two cones? That's essentially a CBT. Well, I'll tell you in just a sec here, once I turn off what is essentially the surface of the moon and I go on to a regular street. 
All right. Oh, it's not so much regular. All right, well, we've got to test the suspension anyway. All right, here we go. So, hmm. here we go. Hold on some bumps. No big deal. A couple bumps. Once again, the suspension is fairly well sorted. There we go. Around this guy. It's not too bad. The acceleration is on a slightly lower level from the automatic transmission that we've tested now a couple times. A couple of things you should probably notice. If you look around here, you're not going to see the turning knobby thingy for anything, right? And that's because we don't have all-wheel drive, so there's no select for terrain. Um, it does have an auto hold mode. And yeah, that's about it. Pretty darn simple if you ask me, but that is okay for those of you who don't like a lot of extra tech if it's unnecessary. I mean, why bother having drive controls if they really don't do anything? Let's get around this guy and see if we got power. You hear that? So what the engine's doing is it's doing the rev thing as if it's geared. That's something that a lot of people have been doing with CVTs recently. Uh, some people call it stepped, and there's a bunch of other terms for it. But essentially, what it's doing is it's making you, the driver, feel like you're driving an automatic transmission. Um, it moved just fine, but it doesn't really have that oomph that the other one has where I felt it a little bit more in my seat. So there you have it. Um, relatively quiet on the roads. Moves just fine. It gets out of its own way. We're in traffic right now, and it has no problem keeping up and passing traffic, but this is not what I would consider a speedy vehicle by any measure of your imagination. It is quick enough for traffic, and it won't embarrass itself. It's the easiest way to put it. Oh, let's see if it can do a U-turn in the middle of Minneapolis, in the middle of rush hour. It can, and we're gonna accelerate. And there it is. It just takes a little time to get going. Yeah. It's interesting. It's just the CBT doesn't really have a lot of slap to it, and I'm not hearing it rotate or anything as we're driving either. It's just kind of doing its thing, and I don't really notice it until I really put my foot into it. Otherwise, it drives kind of like an automatic. There you go. General Motors, Chevrolet, finally got the memo from companies like Hyundai when it comes to value for money. They've actually been packing these vehicles with a lot of stuff for the Dell. And that, I think, is one of the strongest points of this vehicle. Here's an example. Base model LT, which gives you lots of stuff that this one has, starts at $29,995. That's including the $1,395 destination charge. Now, if you want to get the all-wheel drive LT, that's $31,995. Then, interesting, the pricing for the Active and the RS are identical. They're both the top of the line, is the way Chevrolet would put it. And essentially, they just look different, but most of the features, not all, but most of the features are the same. So, both vehicles, if you get their front-wheel drive version, $34,395, that's with destination. And if you get all-wheel drive, as this one is equipped with, $36,395. Once again, that is with the $1,395 destination charge. Way under $40,000 for a vehicle that gives you this much isn't bad. Yes, it's not the fastest vehicle out there, nor is it the most economical. But it is not slow, and it's not a gas hog. It handles well, that extra two inches in width really does help a little bit. And I think that this thing, the off-roady one, it looks great. Everybody else is doing this. Everybody else got an off-roady kind of fakey version of their vehicle. This one, I think, looks the part. And I think that they managed to put together for what seems like only a little bit of money for funding, it looks like they made the most out of it. And I'm actually very happy with what they've produced. Time will tell whether or not this vehicle sells as well as it did in the past, but I'm willing to bet it will. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.